Right, good morning, evening. Don't know what time of day it is. Uh, we're currently in the Unibuild Airbus A310, sitting at Tahiti Fine International Airport, November Tango Alpha Alpha. I just thought I'd have to see a nice comment on my video. I'll make a little tutorial how to get the plane started from cold and dark. So this is what it'll look like. You'll have your AFB on and everything will be black. If you look upwards, there's a green light. Click. That's your external power. Once that's on, everything else lights up. Now the easy part here is basically the Airbus rule. Is you don't want any white displayed, so we're just going to click everything that's got a white or reddish white button until they go away. It's the general rule of Airbus. Two, three, four, and there's one there. Um, okay, that's now all the whites extinguished. Now the dome lights are over here. I'm just going to turn those on along with the storm lights. Seatbelt signs, no smoking. Nav lights. I'm going to leave the rest here. Now these are very important. So one, two, three, four will go on without having aligned the IRS system. But pitch trim will automatically turn back off if we haven't aligned the IRS. So actually, I always do this first. Is I'm going to go straight to the IRSs, which are at the top of the panel. So if I turn the torch on with Alt L, this is one of them. We want to go to nav. The second one is here nav and then the third one is here to nav all three to nav and it should say bat upper bat operating so those three are now in a line mode now you can see attitude lights up and we've got the heading and this is basically the alignment point where you get a little notification here to align the IRS the next phase then is to go into menu a cars and you need to do this request sim brief thing so the reason why I do this is basically when you fly this plane it more or less unless you're going just for a short flight it usually makes sense to make something on sim brief so sim brief is not too difficult um, it's on simbrief.com so if I do a little demonstration of what that might look like So here's my sim brief. Um, so I've already made a flight plan here, so essentially we're just going to go into what edit flight looks like. Um, fill this out. This is almost, it's very similar to what you actually do if you do a real life flight plan. For example, Austro Control has a system called Home Briefing, which looks a lot like the VATSIM um, pre-file flight plan option, and it's pretty much just over website, just like VATSIM. And you send it, and then you get a text on your phone saying that Austro Control has accepted your flight plan. And the best part about that is it works, it works worldwide. So even if I go flying in South Africa or wherever um, with my license I'm still okay to file a flight plan with Ostra control um, and the relevant information is sent to the airports concerned so departure today is November Tango Alpha Alpha Far International we're going to PHTO which is Hilo in um, Hawaii where the Mauna Kea observer is observatory which is actually where the um, world carbon dioxide data is being taken from so we're just going to go and create a little bump in that data for the day um, by flying our airbus over there from the 1980s the alternate is honolulu phnl dates day this is the time it's actually 10 30 zulu by this point would be a good departure time um this is the inner builds a310 so this profile i've actually there's a forum link somewhere so if you google it you'll find the profile and i leave this usually as standard so m80 it means a mac 0.8 cruise profile um this will be all done for you, so the routing that goes in there, it tells you if the route's valid for the air rack that you've got installed. Um, I've got Navigraph, so this is always up to date. And the flight time, I tweak it, usually I make it 15 minutes faster, just to kind of give the aircraft a bit of a bump. This is norm you, If you adjust your flight time, it'll normally give you a better cost index, at least with the other Airbuses. With this Airbus, everything's about the same. Leave altitude as auto, unless something strange comes out, I just leave everything else as auto. And there goes your pilot ID and the username is what you need to put in. So then this will tell you the route and then you just go to top and click generate. Yes. Generates the briefing package. Nerve lock ETOPS maps and so on. And then we get the information here. Now we're actually going to use this quite extensively for the starting of the flight because in the Phoenix A320 this data is all um, sucked into the EFB so you just look in the EFB and you find the same information whereas in the older any builds I suppose it's an old school EFB maybe without an internet connection or something like that you know let's be realistic it was the 80s um, you don't have all of this so there's our routing 
This is our f um, pre-flight package, basically. It's a briefing pack. Um, so actually, this is what you would get. And in real life, what you actually send to air traffic control, somewhere down here. There you go. This is what actually goes to air traffic control. So yeah, EUCH, EUCB, EGGW. So it was submitted via Luton because it's a um, EasyJet flight plan style. Flight plan, call sign, IFR, transponder modes, type, is it heavy or not, equipment on board, departure time at the airport of departure, initial altitude and level speed, initial routings, and then estimated arrival after departure. So this is 0501, this is five hours, one minutes after departure, we should arrive at high low with an alternate of PHNL. And then all of this stuff is equipment, date of flight, registration, estimated times at fear boundaries. This is important in real life as well. For example, if I fly to Italy, I have to put in an EET for LIMM, Milano. So when I cross over from Vienna to Milan, FIR. Uh, the operator, persons on board. So C is, I don't know what that means, but persons on board is normally how many people you've got on board. Um, and there you go. That means remark we have TCAS on board. We've got all the weather, blah, 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 blah. Now that's done. That is now saved to my profile as soon as I've seen this dispatch output. So what I do is I then close that down. I'm going to go into the sim now. And on the EFB menu, a cars request sim brief. Click that. Pending comes up. And then here we go. That data is now included into my thing. So NTA, PHTO. I should enter the flight number. So it's PAA24 Papa Hope. Hotel, I think I set today and the cost index I usually go for 100 on the A310 that usually gets me about 0 0.81 0 0.82 Mac and I need to click I align IRS so you click align IRS and then basically all these three here start doing their alignment process which means this starts to come up and that means we can then re-engage these two pitch strip bits next part then go into the flight plan and check okay is everything in there looks like it seems fair enough to me so now what I do is <laughs> I'm much of a cheat I go into Navigraph right actually I'm going to do the weight and balance first so weight and balance is down here two scales and we need to just enter what Simbrief has calculated for us and that is again on the Simbrief page so if I go up to here and I'm going to use this block fuel here so 29560 right in the middle um, so 29560 so how to enter that we go on to EFB, fuel, click on fuel, click on the window, and I can go 29. Now the thing is you have to write 0 0.560 because it's in tons. Confirm, so now the fuel is loaded. Not yet though, we still need to apply that to the aircraft. And then we need to come to the flight plan, and the top line of the flight plan is weight and balance stuff. So we're looking for payload and zero fuel weight. So the payload today is 24465. So basically, between passengers and cargo, I need to get payload to say 24465. So if I put full passengers, okay, I've got 19,000. I'm going to put a little bit less than full, something like that, 203. And 24465. So I'm just going to slide this. Quite a heavy cargo flight, say then. Okay, 8.4 maybe does it. Eight point four oh five, that gets us two four. Maybe it's changed that needs to be eight point two zero five two two five. There you go, 24465. There you go, that's fine, and now we click apply. Yeah, let's apply to aircraft, the central gravity shifts, and now we click live. I don't want to touch that for the rest of the flight. I've now got a CG down here and the trim setting 1.5 up. So the CG, we're actually now going to enter all of this into the init page. So we go back to the Mugdo, click init, hit next page. Now we've got block, zero fuel weight, takeoff gross weight and zero fuel weight CG. So we're going to go zero fuel weight, 104.6. So 
So you just convert it all into tons from kilograms. There you go, 104.6. Fuel is 29.56. So that's 29.6 I'm going to put in. Which I'm going to put 29.5. We always prefer to us underestimate fuel and overestimate weight. So we get roughly the right weight. There we go. So we've got a TOG. W takeoff gross weight 133.8 landing weight 102.7 and then we just put the CG in 23.8 23.8 in the zero fuel weight CG that's all set now I'm going to do trim 1.5 this is very much a kind of flowy way of doing things it's not potentially the real Airbus checklist but it gets everything done and it seems to make some sort of sense to me okay we can see the screens are now on which means the RLS is aligned so you can see the nav display there the RLSs are now no longer throwing up a memo, so I can go up to this part here and engage the two pitch trims. What that then does is the MCP, so all of the mode control panel autopilot windows, light up with numbers. This is important because that's the next part we need to talk about, basically. Um, in the meantime, I'm actually going to turn on the beacon light and start the APU. So APU start is just underneath engine start, master switch on, like in the Airbus A320, and then start on. And it takes a little bit of time and then once it's online, it's online. So the APU is just starting up now. Next part we need to do then is we need to do the takeoff data. So first things first, we need to choose a runway. For that, I've gotten quite fond of using the Navigraph. There's Navigraph. This is my old flights. So this is the one we did yesterday from Perth across to um, Tahiti. We're currently at Tahiti now. I'm just going to unload that import flight from Simbrief. That's uh, PH2. That's where we want to go. So this is now our new flight, 2,280 nautical miles. And I'm going to use the uh, the handy weather screen to basically choose my runway. So runway in use. Well, we've got four knots headwind on zero four and four knots tailwind on two two. So I'm going to use zero four. Add that to the route. Departures available, okay. Looks like it wants us to go to the north, so maybe the Arret departure looks like the most sensible, and then we just turn left slightly. Because um, it's just using an initial fix from the airport. So I'm going to use Arret for echo and then direct. So I'm going to remove TAF actually. There we go, so you can see how that's fixed. That TAF is basically the airport waypoint. Okay, so that's fine. So I'm going to use 04 and Arit for Echo. So I'll go back into the simulator now. Flight plan NTAA SID 04 Arit for Echo. And then you click Insert on the bottom left. That should insert that SID there, and you can see points on the SID are, will have Arit for Echo above them. And then we've got the airways now. So that's basically it's just a direct to Arit. So we're going to TO approach, this is the next part we need to do. Now that we've selected our runway, we can start doing takeoff planning. Takeoff planning happens in the EFB. So above weight and balance, there's a little plane taking off. Click on that. Uh, runway conditions, just refresh those. It does actually now auto import the Meta, so you can see all the Meta data is in here direct, directly. Runway length, you click on M, and it's the bottom left. If you've already entered the runway into the uh, MCDU, the length will come up automatically, so it's 3.44 meter kilometers. Runway heading, same thing, 054, it's auto populated. Um, the weight, we do need to enter manually, so the weight we're going to get from our init page. So we go back to init, next page. Now, you don't necessarily want to be using this one, this is the gross weight before taxi. We're going to use a, a fair amount of fuel taxi. It's about two tons, um, or a ton, or 400 kilograms, or something like that. So we've got 133.8 is our actual takeoff weight. We need to enter that there. 0.8. That's entered now. I'm going to use flaps 15.15. Anti-ice off and air conditioning on. That seems to be standard. That's all entered now. We click calculate, and we get our V1, V rotate, and V2. Uh, Anaflex. So V1 and V rotate go into the MCDU on the takeoff approach page here. So V1, 155, enter. V2, 157, enter. And V, sorry, V2, 161, that goes on the FCU to the flight control unit. So that goes up here. We're going to enter 161 in the speed window. Why do we do that? Well, with aircraft initially, when we climb out, we're not actually going to be using um, 
the profile mode we're going to be using level change for the first 1500 meters um, and what that means is the aircraft will pitch to hold 161 which is our safe climb out speed once we're at 1500 that's a safety altitude we then pitch down slightly accelerate and climb away at a slightly lower power setting um, so the things that we engage when we depart are level change profile heading and nav and what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to set the initial altitude so I just want to set maybe 12,000 feet why not there's no air traffic controllers online I'm going to click level change and profile so what that does is you see over on the left we've actually armed speed followed by P climb so the initial climb out is happening on a speed control climb rate so the aircraft pitches to maintain 161 knots at our power setting and then once we reach the safety altitude it will automatically switch back to uh, the profile so the flex temperature is 59 where does that go well there's a little calculator here this fit here we're going to click flex to at the bottom right and it was 59 so i'm going to put 59 in there and you see as you enter the higher numbers we get a lower um, takeoff power so our takeoff power is 98.5 so it's a reduced power takeoff um, to save fuel basically we can also enter approach stuff now but we're not going to know that it's a five hour flight you know so much can change in five hours so we're not going to assume anything just yet um, we'll get that information as we're flying is what I would say we could actually plan something already but you can see our landing weight is going to be this we at the moment is 149 so we still make an approach now we're not too heavy to land that's basically the CDU is now set up so now what I like to do is put this page into takeoff and approach and I put this right hand one into flight plan so I've got two displays there okay APU is running and available so that's there available which means I could turn off external power Bonk. and we're actually going to go and set up some lighting here so lighting wise you've got a few switches for lights this light here controls the MCE you can see that's lighting up now as I'm scrolling that all the way to the right so that controls these integrated lights bottom here we've got this little light knob here that does pedestal and panel so you can see those lighting up and it does the front main panel so that'll do this lot as well you see that sort of lit that up and then on the left hand side we've got the captain light so that's going to light up the instruments you see they've all gone orange and the panel lighting the map light does this area here that's where you would keep your map if you were flying with a map and compass. Okay. Seems like we're good to go actually. So beacon is on, APU's running, external power's offline. I'm gonna set landing lights to off, strobes to auto. I'm not gonna turn off on any of the other lights now because that'll blind the ground crew while they're doing their um pushback setup. But now what we do is we're just gonna go over to this page here, the plugins page, which this page is also quite nice to look at. This is our Metar data that's recently been added, so you can see you've got the full Metar, it's been vaguely decoded. If some things don't get decoded, so for example, in American Metals, they have all these remarks AO2, SLP, blah blah blah. I don't actually know what they mean. If somebody does know, feel free to write it in the comments. And you've got your wind, 10 statute miles of visibility, cloud setting, layers, temperatures, altimeters. The remark part is when I stop paying attention because it's basically all of this is the real Metar stuff. Is a normal checklist, not going to use it. So, all doors are closed, the GPU can now be disconnected. We prepare for pushback and departure. Basically, if you've got more things open, that will immediately do all of it. Before you click that, do make sure that your APU is running and available and you've manually turned off external power, otherwise, it will just turn the plane off. Um, and unless you don't get it, unless you don't turn it on quick enough, basically, it resets. So, don't do that. So, I'm going to click now back. And this is a bit which is a little bit dubious, basically. Um, <coughs> this will automatically start the pushback phase as soon as it's connected. So I'm going to keep the parking brake on because it just slows it down a bit. So engine start then. So we've done the whole checklist. The MCU is complete. The mode control panel is set up. I'm going to set this to 30 miles in arm constraint mode just so I can see what's going on there. I'm just going to check my flight plan makes sense. So we said we were going to delete TAF, so I'm going to actually delete TAF there. 
uh, because the issue with that was that was actually taking me out to my star and then back to the airport and then back out again. We actually just want to go directly from the end of the star to the next one. Um, and we said that we'd do that in the main route. And you could see there there was a bit of a weird line. And when I deleted that point, it went away. Just check your route makes sense, basically. Um, yeah, we're starting to move, aren't we? Yep. So, engine start. What happens for that? APU is available. We go over here, APU bleed goes on. And you see the green line comes on. I'm just going to put the standby compass on as well. You can hear the APU now. The air conditioning starts. Engine start to A or B. I usually use A. Start 1, open. Now here's the key. We now come down and we look at our engine warnings. And we see N2 rising. We do not turn on the fuel until 20% N2. If you turn on the fuel before 20% N2, you inject fuel into the engine and the exhaust gas temperature rises really quickly before it actually ignites. Now we're at 20, we can safely fuel on, which is just below the throttles here. So the standard sort of fuel switches, it's kind of like a Boeing startup. You can see it now continues through 25. If we hadn't turned on the fuel, it would stop at 25. And if you're wondering why is my engine not going past 25 N2, it's because you haven't engaged fuel yet. Okay, I'm going to just engage the uh, parking brake now, so we actually have a pushback. You can hear the engine starting to spool up. And we're going to show you now what actually does happen when I... Um, there we go, we're just switching over to engine power now. That's what that flick was. So off APU on the engine. It's automatically done. So I'm going to start a um, right turn, so nose to the right. And the trick is it's basically tail direction here. So I want the tail to go left, so left. Okay, now start engine 2, and this time I'm going to mess it up and start the fuel already. There we go, fuel starts already. You see EGT rises immediately. Now this is bad because it's already 700 degrees and we haven't even got ignition yet. Well, we do have an ignition, that's the problem. We're basically setting the engine on fire. But nothing actually happens in the game, but I just want to show you how well it's been simulated. Because now I've reached 840 N1 with N2. There we go, engine 2 over limit, throttle 2 below limit. So basically it says calm your engines down, matey boy. Luckily though, as this starts to warm up, it will settle down. So it's just a fun thing that you can do. You can basically overheat the exhaust gases. Okay, so the pushback's complete. Now I'm just going to set the parking brake. Once the engine starts, it starts to burn off that extra fuel that's causing that exhaust gas temperature rise. And then that will come right back down and it should be within a normal range. So <coughs> we basically want to check that that's roughly the same as the left engine. You see it's coming back down now. So yeah, we're looking for both of these to be roughly the same, so 63.8 within 10 degrees of each other in the exhaust gas temperatures. Fuel kilograms is fuel flow, so it's very low at the moment, we've got 0 0.01 tonnes, um, basically. At the moment that increases quite a bit when we actually... There's the pushback car going away. Okay, let's turn on the taxi lights to take off, and runway tunnel flights to pop. You might notice that that does nothing. Taxi lights definitely need a bit of an improvement. So actually what I like to do is uh, go around the airport with the landing lights on because you can't see otherwise. <laughs> flaps now. So I'm going to set my flaps to 15-15 as we agreed here. So you see here, it's chosen on my departure page here, 15-15. So that's one, that's 15-0 and we want 15-15. They can confirm it here on the little flaps display so it should be 1-5, 1-5. And you can see the flaps coming out now. Water break max. Spoilers aren't. Dome lights off. And storm lights off as well. Storm lights are this one's here, the ones that make them, the mode control panel really bright. Okay, engine one and two are both good starts, so I'm going to turn the engine ignition to off. APU off. And you hear as you turn the ignition off, you get your air conditioning back because it stops the bleed process basically. APU bleed off. Everything set up here, squawk mode here, so this is the transponder bit, I'm just going to put over to TARA test. Okay, let's taxi out. Let's say parking climb, brake, please. That's climb, just the test crossing, climb, That's the TCAS display there. Climb, 
Climb, climb now. Climb, climb now. Descend, descend. The taxi was descend, just a little bit crossing, of power. Descend, crossing, the rudder descend, inputs descend, are separated descend, by default. Descend, descend now. Descend, descend now. Maintain vertical speed. Maintain. Maintain vertical speed. Crossing. Maintain. Monitor vertical speed. Right turn Traffic. Right turn Traffic. Clear of conflict. Let me just get my Volanta stuff set up, my log. Volanta. And I'm going to start this on Vatsim actually. Brakes checked. So add a flight plan, checks in brief, profile, that's him. So I'm just making a that's him profile page and sending that flight plan, connecting, I'm to free Papa Hotel today, flight plan, fetch from server, okay, file. So I've just connected to the that's him network now. As we're taxiing out, normally we do this before we're actually entering the wrong way, but anyway, I'm just going to go down here to Flight Control, FCTL. This is where you control the um, little display here, so right, up, left, up. Elevator's okay. Rudder. And the stabiliser trim is within the green range. That's good. <coughs> Zero force to the left. Strobe lights on. Turn the wrong way. I'm going to go from the back track now. The heading select wise, I'm just going to flip this to the wrong way heading when I'm actually lined up as I do when I'm out on initial heading. So I'm just armed nav there, so you can see now our armed, we've got speed, peak line, and heading nav. That means we're going to climb out of an initial speed hole using pitch and then switch over to profile climb onto a safe altitude. Heading hole will be used initially until we engage in the nav profile, so the nav is going to take over. So that's now set up. We've got our V2 speed set in the speed button window. The lights are on, all the signs are on, everybody's happy as Larry. ET on the left, not too happy to be leaving, but oh well, we've got the Milky Way as well. Okay, we've got our displaced fresh shoulder head now. You can see the red landing lights, that means we've got 150 metres. We're now going to taxi right and around. See why I've turned the landing lights off for taxi, they're just about enough to actually see something. Hello, scenery. It's a runway um, elevation problem there. I'm not complaining, but I'm going to take as much runway as I can get. Which is pushing the rudder to the left, which is causing us to talk to the right. So we're 
basically a bit of left rudder just to counteract that right wind. Once we take off though, we're going to pivot into the wind. There's V1. V1 and ready. Pitch up. It's moving you to about 10 degrees, 5 10 degrees, tap on the brake, skew up. Follow the flight director, which can turn down that EMD, so we'll just see the flight director. There we go. Flight directors are about 400 feet, sorted by the pod. There you go, that engages our autopilot. Now we see we're still in flex mode, we're on SRS nav. Climbing through 700 feet, 800 feet, we're still climbing. Once we get to 1500, this will automatically switch over to auto and we'll engage peak climb, and you'll see that happen and the engine power will slightly reduce. There we go, peak line, peak throttle, engine power to 95.6. And at this point, I start thinking about flaps coming up, so if I'm above my F speed, I can remove one layer of flaps and then remove the 15 degrees of flap. And allow the aircraft to now accelerate above S. If you don't allow the aircraft to accelerate above S and remove the slats, you can put the aircraft into a stall because we're still below the slat speed stall. Okay, there's our S speed. I'm going to remove the slats now. That's these coming up now here. And now we'll start the acceleration up to 250 knots. Disarm the four speed brake and gear to neutral position, so that's down in the middle. If we don't do that, we can't engage this here auto brakes for landing. So if you're finding auto brakes not engaged, you just check that your gear is in the neutral position. Okay, there you go, that's a departure really. 10,000 feet check, all we do is I turn off the seatbelt signs and landing lights and the aircraft continues normally and I'm just going to set my cruising altitude now for like level 340 initially and we'll be step climbing as we burn fuel. There you go, that's roughly it. I mean, if you've got any questions, post them in the comments so I know it's a bit of a quick it's a kind of um, quick start guide rather than a full checklist proper procedures guide but that's how I fly I don't generally when I'm simulating do the full list I do in real life obviously um, but eventually a lot of those things become memory items and they start happening in the wrong order because that's just the order that you find it natural to do things um, so I kind of like working through the panel kind of well, this panel's a bit less the Airbus A320 panel layout is fantastic. You can do it very much left to right, top to bottom, your whole way across, and you have a flow basically, and you know what you're checking for, so the checklist becomes slightly redundant, but, um, at least in the beginning. Then the next thing you just need to be aware of when we come into land is landing altitude needs to be set here. So, for example, if you're landing somewhere like Bogota or Innsbruck, that does need to be set because they're higher altitude airports. If you're landing on the coast, which we will be doing, it's going to be 0 to 100 feet really. Um, it's not going to make too much of a difference. It's just for the pressurization system. So climbing through 7,000 now, we're going to go up to 10,000. I'm just going to show you what I do there. Um, so yeah, we'll do 250 knots for now, and basically the, the climb profile until 10,000 is steeper because we're basically using the same power to maintain 250. And once we get above uh, 10,000, we'll be using the same power, but we'll be trying to go for something like 300, um, which will cause us to pitch down and accelerate. And that's also more comfortable for passengers, so they can walk around the cabin, which is not doing the cabin size. Got a good climb rate now, 3,000 feet per minute. Now that we've got a clean aircraft, no more flaps out, um, and we've slightly increased the engine power as well, which is nice. Now the engine's warmed up, it, it allows us to have more power. There's basically a initial after departure, relatively low power settings, probably for noise abatement reasons actually. But now that we're a bit further away we can start accelerating. You see now 101.7 set. There's 10,000 feet. I'm going to turn the landing lights off and the seatbelt signs as well. And if we have a look over you'll see that we pitch down to 5 degrees rather than 10 degrees and we'll start to accelerate now. And then we'll just go to the cruise phase and that's that really.